So we know how ferromagnetic materials work. We know how magnets work. We know that our magnets go from our, we have magnetic lines of flux that go from the north side to the south side of a magnet. But we're going to talk about a current carrying conductor. So a current carrying conductor, another word for a current carrying conductor is simply wire. So a current carrying conductor uh, most commonly is say a copper wire. So let's think about this current carrying conductor as a copper wire. And the lines of force that go around a copper wire or a current carrying conductor, and we're developing this because it's going to be important as we, um, as we configure these current carrying conductors into different configurations. For example, if we wrap them around a ferromagnetic material, all sorts of great things will happen. So from first principles though, let's see what happens to these flux lines or these magnetic lines of floor, force through around this wire. So um, there's an important rule that helps us master this topic and it's called the right hand rule. Um, it's going to be important in, in motors in general. So we'll get to that. So just have your right hand ready and realize that we'll get to um, get to to looking at the right hand rule. So, and that's our way of describing the, these lines of force. So if our lines of force are say in blue, uh, our lines of force are typically called flux lines. So our magnetic lines of force are flux lines or magnetic lines of force which we're gonna draw in, in blue. So if you look at this example that's on the screen here, the, the, here's a wire going through a plane. And if you did this activity and you put a wire through a plane, if you turn the current source on and current is flowing through this wire and the direction of current is conventional current, okay? Conventional current, we're gonna use conventional current conventional uh, electron flow, conventional current, then we're gonna assume that our current is going in this direction, conventional flow. We will see uh, if you put iron filings, if you put iron filings on this, uh, on this plane, then you would see those iron filings align themselves actually like this in concentric circles in concentric circles, and those are your flux lines, your magnetic lines of flux. They're gonna be aligned in circles around this wire. Now, uh, putting iron filings doesn't really show us the direction of this uh, these flux lines. And we know that flux lines have a direction. We know that flux lines have a direction. Um, but if you put a compass there, and remember that our compasses are are pieces of equipment that are just made by us. And they're made by us with a magnetic south pole that points to magnetic north. And then we paint it north, basically. So there are compass, if it's made properly, it will point to north. So what that is saying is that um, <clears throat> north is in this direction. And it is showing us that there is a direction. Clearly, there is a direction uh, associated with this magnetic field. And that direction is, let's say, uh, what we're looking at now is counterclockwise around this current carrying conductor. And what our right-hand rule says is that if you, if you, um, point your thumb in the direction of current travel, then uh, your fingers will show the direction of the flux. So let's draw this flux again. And if we didn't have this compass here, we would know that our lines of flux are going to be in concentric circles concentric circles around our current carrying conductor. Our right-hand rule tells us, point your thumb up 
in the direction of current flow, then your fingers will be showing you the direction of the magnetic flux lines. Here we go. Now, here's another thing to know is that remember our lines of flux, they have direction. And they also have this property where they oppose one another. And the, and the property where they oppose one another tells us that um, once you get way out here in free space, your magnetic field is not going to be nearly as strong as it is near that current carrying conductor or that wire. So what you end up with here, and you could see this if you uh, looked at magnetic filings, is that the ones here closer to the direction or closer to this current um, are closer together. And these ones are farther apart. And what this tells us about the magnetism or the magnetic field in general is that uh, there is a stronger magnetic field in the middle. Um, and I'm going to say oppose or they repel each other. Because they repel each other and they're in free space, um, they, they are going to be, uh, it's going to be a weaker magnetic field. So it's a weaker it's a weak magnetic field out here and a strong magnetic field in here close to the current carrying conductor. And what sh we should really notice about this is uh, where's the pole? There's actually no pole. We're not talking about a pole when we're talking about a current carrying conductor. Okay, and let's look at this right-hand rule when we're just now we're just looking at this conductor and we are not bringing it through a plane okay so this is just another way of looking at the current carrying conductor it has current flowing in the conventional current um, method i like to draw that like this and just say current is flowing in this direction sometimes i say this in, to denote the electrons flowing but it's more clear to write current like that so the current is flowing in this direction. Uh, it's going through this wire or current carrying conductor. And we're gonna use our right-hand rule. And it, so if you put your thumb in the direction of this current, then uh, your fingers are gonna say, oh, the lines of flux then, the lines of flux, which must go around, it's quite hard to draw these ones, but you have to be very careful that, uh, well, that you know you you break your drawing where that current carrying conductor is so you know where the back is and you know where the front is so i'm going to ignore the red lines right now which give me the answer i'm going to look at my blue lines i'm going to put my thumb in the direction of this current flow conventional current flow i'm going to wrap my fingers around the coil and my fingers are pointing up in the front here which means that the current goes this way and if we don't draw this uh, correctly, then we turn up, turn up with a bit of a MC Escher thing where uh, you, you could really see two directions. But here's my current and my fingers are telling me it's going in this, this direction. What happens if you use your left hand? You get exactly the opposite. So try it, put your left hand, put your thumb facing the direction of the current going through and it entirely goes exactly the opposite way. Wouldn't you also get it facing the opposite if you had your right hand facing the other way? Yeah, exactly. Because then you've got your current the wrong way. If your current goes the wrong way, then, uh, well, if your current goes the wrong, goes the other way, if you put your thumb the other way, that means your current is going the other way. And if the current is going the other way, then the the direction of the magnetic flux lines would literally go that other way. So if this is my current carrying conductor now, and I have the current flowing this way, here's my direction of current. I would put my thumb um, the other way, and then my thumb would be going, um, my fingers would be pointing down in front. All right, so that's the direction and uh, we're going to get into circuits where we are 
we are going to be um, changing this current, right? Alternating current goes goes from this to this. So what an alternating current does is it expands a magnetic field and then it collapses a magnetic field and then it expands it in the opposite direction and then it collapses it. It doesn't just appear and disappear. It expands and collapses, expands and collapses and changes direction of this magnetic field, which is very, very useful to do a lot of good work. Here's just another uh, picture of this. Uh, in in this uh, this picture here, we are going. Um, current is flowing in this direction. So you put your thumb up, your fingers go around, and that shows me that it's going in this direction, the direction of this finger pointing around. All right. And then we have to remember that they are concentric circles until they get thinner and thinner. Here's another way to look at it. Uh, this is dot out of page, dot into page. So now we're back to looking at a plane. So we're looking at this plane and how I like to remember how to do that. This is if we think about like um, darts, the like the, the, the game, game, the game of darts. Um, then, uh, or if we look at, say, uh, mm, uh, arrows, like uh, bow and arrows, bow and arrows, then here we go. We have the dart or the arrow has this, um, has these feathers at the end, right? And then it has a point at the front. So um, here's what I've done now is I've cut a wire. Okay, I've cut a current carrying conductor. I cut that wire. Well, here's the cross section of that wire, right? Here's a cross section of the wire. And if this uh, this bow and arrow or this bow, I mean this arrow, <laughs> not a bow, this, this arrow, oops. If this arrow um, is coming out of the page at me, and so it's coming towards me, then what's gonna go through the paper first is going to be this side, right? This is like, this is a dot. A dot, if it's coming out at me, dot, out at me. And so if it's coming out at me, then if I do the right hand rule, then my thumb has to go up, right? If my paper is on a plane and, and I'm hovering over the paper that I am right now, then it's gonna come up at me. So then my magnetic lines of force then are going, to, my fingers are telling me that they're going this way. My magnetic lines of force are going this way. And of course, magnetic lines of force are continuous. So I'll draw them continuous. Whereas if I had cut that conductor, let me cut a wire again. And I'm looking at it, you know, bird's eye view, looking where I cut that wire. So I'm looking at the cross section of this wire, right? Then um, if, if it's going into the page, if it's going into the page, then I see, I see the end. I see the end of this. I see like, um, this is feathers, right? Uh, and it makes a cross. The feathers are going to make a cross. So the dot went through, the dot went through, and then it left a cross where those, where those arrows actually went through as well, or sorry, where those, um, uh, Feathers actually went through there as well. So now just by that cross, I know that this went into the page. And so now I'm grabbing my thumb and I'm pushing my thumb into the page. My fingers are saying, my fingers are saying that the current or the magnetic flux must be turning this way. There we go. So that's how I would look at this again from the point of view of, um, of, of cutting one of these cross sections.